Somebody asked me, are there any motorcycles in the Bible? Well, a fellow told me one time, uh, the noise of Joshua's triumph was heard throughout the land. <laughs> Obviously, he believed that thou pipe save lives. <laughs> However, I want to say I did, I went and looked it up, and that verse is not actually in the Bible. I, I checked. It is a fact, though, that uh, a seasoned motorcyclist can tell which of his friends is coming over to visit by the sound of the exhaust. And, uh, and there is a verse in the Bible where Moses is talking to Joshua, and he says, no, <laughs> that's not the sound of a victory. Uh, that's uh, Exodus <laughs> chapter 32, 18. <laughs> and, uh, I'll admit that I took that verse out of context. <laughs> We have all kinds of bikes here today. All bikers and all brands are welcome. Uh, Eldon uh, brought his uh, 1946 Harley Davidson uh, 45 hardtail. I think that's pretty pretty cool. Yeah. It spent last night in in my garage uh, with uh, with a couple of Beamers and a Honda. And I'm just hoping it didn't teach him any bad habits like, <laughs> <laughs> like leaking oil. <laughs> But actually, it wasn't leaking oil, it was just marking its territory. <laughs> I've never owned a Harley. I do have a dog named Harley. Um, when he came to us, I uh, already had another, I had another yellow lab named Beamer. And so I called this one Harley because he was built a little lower and wider and slower. <laughs> guys here today that came in on some old bikes. That, that's awesome. I don't think anybody came on an old British bike though, did they? They were famous for, for breaking down. However, I do need to point out that one half of all the old British bikes ever sold are still on the road. The other half made it home. <laughs> and, uh, so it, it really doesn't matter uh, what you ride. There is a camaraderie between motorcyclists. It's, it's very, very special. Uh, when we're out on the road, we meet another motorcycle, we, we wave. Yes. And uh, typically we'll use like a hello, upswept wave. And I had a newbie say to me one time, how come we, we use that, that low, upswept wave instead of going like this? And I said, well, we're not really waving, we're picking up parts. And, uh, <laughs> as a teenager, I dreamed of owning a motorcycle of my own, but I couldn't afford one at that time, so I came up with a plan. I was just going to follow a group of bikers down the road and pick up the parts that fell off and build my own. <laughs> and if you think that's a joke, nobody does that. <laughs> I love to be out on the road with my motorcycle. Uh, when I ride, I feel happy, I feel free. It is great therapy. Uh, in all my years, I have never seen a motorcycle parked outside a psychiatrist's office. Uh, unless it belongs to the psychiatrist. I will admit, however, that sometimes uh, this shirt is true for me. My daughter gave it to me for Christmas a few years ago, and it says, uh, sometimes it takes a whole tank full of gas before I can think straight. And uh, if you are a rider, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, if not, all I can say is if I have to explain, you wouldn't understand anything. Yeah. Uh, there are so many ways to enjoy motorcycles. And the only thing that I'm more enthusiastic about than motorcycles is Jesus. Amen. Much of my life has been spent on and around motorcycles. I've, I've ridden now for just over 40 years since uh, Doty got me started. Um, I've ridden now over a million miles. Uh, that's miles, not those little kilometer type things. In, uh, in 16 countries on five continents. 20 years I worked in the motorcycle industry. Eight years my wife and I had a a dealership, a motorcycle dealership down in Cape Girardeau, Missouri. I've ridden adventure bikes in the Alps of Europe and uh, in the Atlas Mountains in Morocco and the Andes and Chile and Argentina and South America. Motorcycles have carried me to uh, all the world's biggest waterfalls, to Niagara, of course, to Victoria in Africa and to Wasu Falls in South America. And uh, I've ridden sport bikes on some of the finest road racing courses in America. And I will say this. Dodie told you about how I <coughs> learned the hard way, um, bum, bum. Um, and I'm still learning. Those of you who ride will say, yes, we're always learning. In fact, that's a good way to go through life. 
And one of the things that I have uh, learned and I'm still learning along the way is that when you're motorcycling, there's a right way and there's a wrong way to do things. For example, uh, the right way to ride is uh, clean and sober and not under the influence of uh, something that uh, messes your mind. Speaking of how to do things right and, and sometimes not so right, when we owned the shop, I had a, an older fellow come one time, not real old, just my age, and, uh, and he bought a BMW, a used BMW, more like an older one, it was an R100. Now if you're familiar with the way the BMW labels their models, when they, uh, when they label it, they drop off one zero at the end from the engine size. So a R100 is a 1,000cc motorcycle. Well, this guy came in, he wanted to buy a bike, and, and I sat him up with it, and I said, do you know how to ride? And he said, oh, sure I do. And, and he came to get the bike and picked it up. We moved it out to the front of the building there on the street, and uh, he got on that bike and uh, revved the engine a couple times, and then he revved it real good, dumped the clutch, and uh, the front tire never touched the ground. He went all the way across the street, over the curb, and there was a brick building on the other side of the street. But fortunately, it had a very large, heavy hedge in front of it. And he went wham into that hedge. In fact, he took out such a big piece of hedge that they had to cut it down afterwards. But when he, we, he got up and he shook himself off and he said, wow, that bike has a lot of power for 100 cc's. <laughs> so, if you ride, um, there is a chance you will fall, some get back on, some don't, and some can't. I remember riding near Nelson, B.C. with a group of friends, and we came up to another group of riders, and one of their number had, uh, had gone at a very high rate of speed right off a curve and into a, a river. He was extremely badly injured. I ended up uh, helping on the scene and loading him into an ambulance when I finally got there. And I said to his friends, like, how, how could this happen? And they explained that uh, they'd been riding together and all of a sudden he blasted past them at a high rate of speed and then turned around to make sure that they were impressed and ridden right off the end of the curve. Oh. He, was, he was badly broken. He, he had the most broken up body I'd ever seen a person still be alive. And after they got him out of there and he was gone in the ambulance, I said to one of his friends, what happened? And he said, he was going stupid and no stupid so. <coughs> you know guys, in life, as in writing, there's a right way and there's a wrong way. Proverbs 14, 12 in the Bible says, There is a way that seems right to a man, but in the end it leads to death. Motorcycles come with a manual that explains how they should be operated. We have been given a manual for life, too, and it's called the Bible. In the Bible, God explains that there's a right way and there's a wrong way to live. Perhaps you think, what gives God the right to tell me what is right and what is wrong? I'll decide that for myself. Well, let's begin at the beginning. The very first verse in the Bible, Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And so, very simply, He created everything, and it's all His. John chapter 1, verses 3, says that the Son of God was with God the Father in the beginning. Through Him, it says, all things were made. Without Him, nothing was made that has been made. So, He created it all. It belongs to Him. Everything you see and everything you can't see is His. You and I belong to Him. When God created the universe, he put natural laws in place. One day, a man by the name of Isaac Newton saw an apple fall out of a tree. And he realized that there was a universal natural law called gravity. Well, just as God created a universe with natural laws, he created a universe with spiritual laws too. When people disobey God's law, they think that they're breaking the law, but it's not the laws that are broken. It's the people that are broken. The world is full of sad and broken people. We live in a broken world. When you disobey God's spiritual law, the Bible calls that sin. Sin 
is any deviation from God's standard. And God's standard is perfection. Anybody here that's perfect? Just put your hand up if you are. <laughs> One, maybe. <laughs> now, we're not perfect. I didn't think so, and I surely am not. You know what the Bible says? It says, 1 John 1, 8, If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But then it goes right on to say, and I love this, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Amen. 1 Timothy 1.15 says, Here is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And then Paul, who was writing that letter, adds this little comment. To save sinners of whom I am chief. Well, here's the good news, folks. If Jesus Christ could save the chief of sinners, there's hope for the rest of us Indians, too. <laughs> the fact is, some people have the idea that they're so bad that God can't forgive them. It's not true. God can and will forgive anyone who comes to Him in repentance. It's also true that there's no one so good that they don't need God's forgiveness. The fact is that being on my motorcycle gives me a natural feeling of happiness and freedom. But God's forgiveness gives me supernatural happiness and true freedom that will last all of my life and through eternity. Now let me illustrate how that works. Bikers, you love kids, right? Bikers just love kids. Motorcyclists are some of the biggest supporters of charities that reach out to children. Toys for Tots, a huge thing, a toy run, big deal. Uh, yesterday, no, day before yesterday, I was out riding with, uh, with somebody that's here this morning, a couple other guys, and uh, we met a rider uh, from Ontario, I guess, who was doing a charity ride across Canada in support of children's hospitals. Uh, there's an organization called Bikers Against Child Abuse. Uh, riders who are willing to put themselves at the risk of being hurt, if need be, in order to save a child. Well, what, what riders will do for a child, Jesus did for all of us, big time. He came into this world, first of all, as a baby, born to a virgin, in order to save us. He performed great deeds of mercy, miracles that have never been equal, teaching, beautiful teaching, showing us how to live. But you know, Jesus knew that sweet words alone could never redeem women and men. When he was still a young man, the tide of public opinion turned against him. He was arrested, put through the mockery of a rigged trial, if you will. Sentenced to be abused and then crucified on a cross. But imagine what it would have been like to be there in that city of hate on that faithful day. You hear the dull thud of hammer blows as the nails are pounded into his flesh. And then that cross is raised against the sky. There's a man on his hands, his feet are dripping blood. And he hangs there suspended between heaven and earth, rejected it seems by both. Somehow, in, in the midst of his pain, he, he cries out to his father. And he says, Father, forgive them. They don't know what to do. And I believe God forgave even that. His enemies thought that they got rid of him for good. They took him down from the cross. They put him in the tomb. Then, you know what happened, right? Three days later, Easter happened. The resurrection. Jesus Christ came back to life again. And from that day to this, nothing has ever been the same. Because He lives, we too can live a new life. Amen. The glory of God is man fully alive, fully in touch with the God who created us. You know, Jesus said on one occasion, 
to his friend Martha who was grieving over the, the death of her brother. He said, I am the one who raises the dead and gives them life again. He who believes in me, even though he dies like anyone else, will live again. He is given eternal life for believing in me and will never die. And then he asked this question of Martha. Do you believe this? And that's the question for you. Do you believe this? Because what you do with that question, what you do with Jesus Christ, makes all the difference. For now and forever. In just a couple of moments, we're going to go outside. We're going to have a blessing of the bikes. And I'm going to ask all of the, all of the riders to go to their own motorcycle. And you can either stand beside it and put hands on it or, or you can sit on it if you prefer. And we're going, to, we're going to pray for you, for all the riders, the bikes, and all of you who are gathered here today, whether you ride or not. But I also want to say before we go outside, if you have any questions about this message, or especially if you have any questions about the claims of Jesus Christ, I would like you to speak either with me afterwards or with another Christian person here, maybe somebody that you know and trust. We want you to know for sure before you leave today that Jesus Christ is your Savior and your Lord Amen. and that He's forgiven for your sins. Amen. I'm going to ask you all to just bow your heads for, for a moment. And uh, this, is not, this is not to, uh, to impress anybody else that's here. But if you are here this morning and you want to say yes to Jesus Christ, if you want to ask Him to be your Lord and Savior to forgive your sin, I invite you just to raise your hand now. Okay, thank you. See that hand? Yes. Another, another, another. Yes, a number of hands all over, the, all over this morning. God is at work here. God is still changing lives today. Those of you who know Him and love Him, you pray for these people who are raising their hands. Up. And I encourage you, if you've raised your hand, to talk to somebody before you leave today. God wants to finish His good work in your life. Father God, be with us now as we go out to the, to the blessing of the vice. You've seen these hands and you know that within the heart of each of those persons they've raised a little hand and they said, God, I want to live for you from this day forward. Change me like you changed Eldon. Change me like you're changing people all over the world every day. I want to be your much-loved child and a part of your forever family. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.